As a farrier or a hoof care provider, it's important to understand the anatomy and know the anatomy of the horse's body and lower limb. It's important because we need to know the function of each tissue we're dealing with and be able to explain and understand when we're discussing issues with the veterinarian, the horse owner, or the horse's caregiver. As a farrier or a hoof care provider, my responsibility is the insensitive tissues, which would include the hoof wall, the insensitive hoof wall, the insensitive sole, and the insensitive frog. And every insensitive tissue has a sensitive tissue that nourishes that area. We look at a sagittal section, or that's a section split in half of the horse's lower limb. We look at the, the frog. We have the insensitive frog here. We have the sensitive frog here that nourishes. We have the sensitive sole, and we have the laminae that nourishes the coronary corium and the laminae that nourishes the hoof wall. When we look at the base of the foot, the solar or the distal aspect of the foot, we have the hoof wall, we have the white line, the sole, the bars of the foot, the collateral sulcus of the frog, the central sulcus of the frog, right in the center here, the point of the frog. When we look at areas of the foot, we have buttress of heel, we have heel, the quarters, and the toe. When we open that foot up and look from the inside, the bones consist of the coffin bone or the distal phalanx. We have the navicular bone or the distal sesamoid bone, the short pastern or the middle phalanx, the long pastern the proximal phalanx, and the cannon bone, the coffin joint, which is just below the top of the hoof, the pastern joint, and the fetlock joint. When we look closer at the tendons, which transmit energy from the muscle to the bone, the main extensor tendon attaches proximally, or at the top, to the main extensor muscle, travels down the front of the limb, or the dorsal aspect, and attaches proximally on the extensor process of the coffin bone. The main extensor tendon, the function is to extend the lower limb. If we look at the palmar aspect, of the foot, the deep digital flexor tendon attaches proximally or at the top to the deep digital flexor tendon, attaches distally to the semilunar crest of the coffin bone after going over the flexor surface of the navicular bone, distal sesmoidian bone, or pulley bone. The function of the deep digital flexor tendon is to flex the lower limb. The superficial flexor tendon attaches proximally to the superficial flexor muscle, bifurcates behind the pastern, allows the deep digital flexor tendon to go through it, and attaches distally to the bottom of the long pastern top of the short pastern and flexes the fetlock and pastern joints. 
The sesamoidian ligaments, sesamoidian ligaments are palmar to the fetlock joint. The superficial flex, superficial sesamoidian ligament attaches to the distal margin of the sesamoidian bones and attaches to the second phalanx, or the middle phalanx, on the proximal border. The middle sesamoidian ligament is shorter and attaches to the palmar aspect of the long pastern bone. And the deep sesamoidian ligament goes between the sesamoids and holds them together. The impar ligament of the navicular bone attaches to the distal border of the navicular bone and attaches into the semilunar crest of the coffin bone. Navicular suspensory ligaments that suspend the navicular bone travel each side of the limb and attach to the short pastern and the long pastern on the sides. The suspensory ligament bifurcates the fetlock, travels around each side of the fetlock, and attaches dorsally to the front of the long pastern bone and short pastern bone and goes in with the main extensor tendon and attaches to the extensor process of the coffin bone. And the function of the suspensory ligament is to suspend the fetlock joint, the pastern joint. This is the digital cushion, and the digital cushion provides just that cushion between the environment and the sensitive tissues of the foot, including the ligaments, tendons, and bones of the foot. Here we have the frog, the sole, and the wall. The thickness and the rate of the growth of the sole, wall, and frog would depend on environmental issues, nutrition, genetics, and possibly maturity of the horse. This is a sagittal section. And as we close that sagittal section, we look from the outside you can see this bump here. That would be your suspensory ligament as it bifurcates around the fetlock and attaches dorsally or to the front on the long pastern and short pastern. And if we look at this hoof head from the top, we see the top of the short pastern here we see the deep digital flexor tendon. We see the collateral ligaments of the coffin joint. And there are collateral ligaments on every joint in the lower limb. Collateral meaning both sides. Collateral ligaments of the coffin joint. Collateral ligaments of the pastern joint. And collateral ligaments of the fetlock joint. We also see the ungular cartilage here the vascular channels of the palmar digital artery, and we're seeing the digital cushion here. The coronary corium, the perioplic ring, and the perioplic ring puts a coating on the outside of the hoof wall as a protectant. We see the skin and then part of the coronary corium. If we travel further up the limb to the fetlock joint, we're seeing the top, we're seeing the cannon bone here, the main extensor tendon here, the deep digital flexor tendon, the suspensory ligament, 
the superficial flexor tendon, the tendon sheath, and vascular channels for the palmar digital arteries. Collateral ligaments, the ear got, the bulbs of the heel, the fetlock, pastern area, and hoof. The extensor process of the coffin bone, the palmar process, and the tip of the coffin bone. Vascular channels within the coffin bone that feed and supply nourishment to the laminae. The attachment of the main extensor tendon to the extensor process. Here again you can see clearly the impar ligament, deep digital flexor tendon, semilunar crest of the coffin bone. Digital cushion and the frog. When we're talking about the aspects of the foot or the areas, the front is dorsal, the bottom is distal, the back is palmar. We go to the top and that's proximal. Upward connection, the proximal aspect of the foot, distal aspect, palmar aspect, and dorsal aspect.